Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. So what was your homework question? I have no idea what we're what you're talking about. It's like three minus i over negative two plus three i. Okay, so we did one of those in in lecture already. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna skip that, but it's because it's recorded on video already. But the general idea, the general idea, is that if if you need to divide complex number a plus bi divided by c plus di, the general method is that you have to multiply by 1, that's, and that is so that you don't change the, um, you don't change the, the value. And what you want and what you need is in the denominator you need a specific kind of value in the denominator to make sure that the denominator will become real. So what needs to go in the denominator? C minus di. C minus, di. minus di. So you need this C minus d, C minus di, so that the product in the denominator becomes real. So how are C plus di and C minus di related? They're said to be blank to each other. They're said to be conjugate to each other. So these two are conjugate. So that conjugate C minus DI is what makes it all work. But you can't just put a C minus DI down there. That'd be changing the expression. So how do you overcome the fact that you put a C minus DI down there? put one in the numerator. And then from here it's just a circus of foil and i squared is negative one. It just from here. Other questions? Other questions? Okay. Good. So here's an example similar from last time. So for example, Suppose I want you to solve x squared plus 4x plus 1 is 0. <coughs> so anytime you're asked to solve a quadratic and, and the, the instructions are not specific, you should do whatever, whatever means is most efficient. So the first thing you should check is, OK, well, can, since it's monic, can I think of two numbers whose product is 1 and whose sum is 4? 3 and 1? No, that won't work. <laughs> so two numbers whose product is 1 and sum is 4? Probably not off the top of your head can you think of these numbers. There are numbers that do that but you probably just can't think of them off the top of your head. So, okay, the product sum thing is not going to work. So what's the only other means that we have to proceed then? It's the thing that we did. Okay, and then what? So, so I'm going to leave myself a little spot here to do that. So then we did something last time where I said, okay, I'm going to take all, all the terms that have x, I'm going to put them on one side, all the terms without x, I'm going to put them on the other side, and I'm going to leave myself a bunch of horizontal space there. So what is this called? We gave this a name doing this. I, I probably didn't say it formally. I probably said it just out loud. No, I, then I, write, I did write product slash sum trick, face. and it had a sad face. Yeah, it had a sad face. Because it won't, the product slash sum trick won't work. So what, what we're going to do here is remember I said we're going to add something and then subtract the same thing. So do you remember doing that? Yes. Okay. So then I said it, I believe I said it out loud, and I, then that I didn't write it down. But that technique is called complete the square. I thought it was 
<laughs> it's called sad face. Well, that too, it's known by that. Okay, so then in this horizontal space, we're going to add zero. We're going to add zero. But we have to be sort of clever about it. So it's always going to be that we're going to <coughs> take these terms with x, and then we're going to add something over 2 and square that much. And then we have to subtract the same amount so that we've added 0. And my question to you is, is what, what goes in the numerator there? So it's always Four. over 2 and squared. So what goes in here? 4. four. So in this exercise, it's 4. Is it always 4? No. Then what is it? B. It's this coefficient, right? It's that coefficient right there. Okay, so then what's 4 over 2? Two? 2. 2. Square that much? 4. So what we're saying is that for some reason we found it expedient to add 4 and then subtract 4. And the reason why we did that, we want to do that, is because the original quadratic did not factor by grouping. In, in, the, in the nice way that we, that we wanted it to. However, look at these terms. These three terms do factor, and they factor in the nicest possible way. What is the factorization of x squared plus 4x plus 4? x plus 2 all squared. So now I'm going to move this 4 to the other side, and we have this equation. Okay, great. Now what? Square root both sides. Okay, I disagree. This is not correct. Thank you. The absolute value of x plus 2 is square root 3. <clears throat> so now ignore what's inside of the absolute value for a minute. I have a question for you. What could we put in that absolute value so that square root 3 would come out? Square root of 3 would work. And what else? Also, negative square root of 3 would work. So that is to say, suppose you wanted 10 to come out of, the out of the absolute value. Well, you could put in a 10. But you could also put in a negative 10. As a result, the way this is usually written, frequently written, is that x plus 2 needs to be one of the square, root, one of the square roots of 3, either positive square root 3 or negative square root 3. Now we can solve for x. negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. But now, to be very clear, I want you to write out both solutions. What are the two solutions? Thank you. So back to the back to the original here, back to the original, the question we asked ourselves at least initially was, can you think of two numbers whose product is 1 and whose sum is 4? Probably not off the top of your head. But those numbers are the negation of these. So the two numbers whose product is 1 and whose sum is 4 is 2 plus the square root of 3 and 2 minus the square root of 3. The product of those is 1, the sum of those is 4. Okay, so any question about this? <clears throat> so this is called completing the square. At least one of your homework exercises says to solve 
a quadratic using this method. Okay, so that's what's expected. Um, <coughs> now, I remember a long time ago when I learned this technique in the first place. And I also remember that the instructor called it complete the square. And I remember wondering, what does that mean? And who's, who's going around making all these incomplete squares anyway? <laughs> what does that even mean? And I remember just being sort of just left there. She might as well have stopped talking after she said complete the square because I had no idea, I just couldn't focus on whatever else she was saying. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what it means, why it's called complete the square. So I'm going to write in two columns. And the left column is going to be algebra, and the right column is going to be pictures. Uh, I'm going to do the algebra column first. So the most general quadratic uh, general quadratic looks like this. AX squared plus BX plus C with a non-zero a. Why do we need why do we need a to be not zero? Because if a is zero then it's just bx plus c. Right. If a was zero, then it wouldn't be a quadratic. B could be zero, that'd be fine. C could be zero, that'd be fine. But if a is zero, it's not a quadratic. Okay. So we're going to for for just purposes of illustration, um, <clears throat> I want you to observe that if this was an equation, if it was an equation, I could divide everything by a, I could divide everything by a, and then I'd have a monic quadratic. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a quadratic that's monic, and then also to make our lives simpler and to make the geometry easier to understand, I'm going to drop the c. So I'm going to take the specific case when a is 1, and c is 0, just to make our lives a little easier. <clears throat> so here's this, here's this case, x squared plus bx. That's the quadratic we're dealing with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square for that, for that particular um, quadratic. So x squared plus bx, and then we're going to add 0, so plus 0, okay? x squared plus bx, and then what specifically are we going to add and subtract? b over 2 squared, and then minus b over 2 squared. So add b over 2 squared, and also subtract this much. <clears throat> now the first three terms, the first three terms factor nicely. How do the first three terms factor? Very good. So x plus b over 2, all squared, and then minus b over 2 squared. OK. So this is called, to getting to this point, this point is called the difference of squares. Why do you suppose that's the case? Right, because you've got this expression squared and that expression squared and you're subtracting. Okay. This is sort of the, what's at the bottom of, a, of, of every complete the square task, is you have to come to the, 
difference of squares like this. OK, good. So that's, that's the algebra. So now in the right column, I'm going to, I'm going to um, do the same thing, but in pictures. So I'm going to take this expression, x squared plus bx, except I'm going to take a different tack. I'm going to say, OK, do you observe that there's a common x and that we can factor it out? OK. Now here's one of the fundamental things I want to make sure that all of you have firmly implanted in your brain by the time you leave. So on the one hand, by the time you leave college algebra, I mean, on the one hand, arithmetic, the rules of arithmetic are a thing unto themselves. Okay? That is addition, product, division, all those things. On the other hand, they also have distinct geometric meanings. So for example, I would like for you to suppose that I made for you a rectangle that was three meters on a side and five meters on the other side. What is the area of this rectangle? 15. And what dark magic did you use to come to this answer? Product, right? The product of three and five. Well, that is, that is in fact the relationship between arithmetic product and geometric area, is that when you have when you have two linear measures at right angles, then the area of the, of the corresponding rectangle is the product of those linear measures. So product and area are intimately related. And that's one of the things that I want you to, to really have by the time you leave college algebra. OK, that being the case, that being the case, I'm going to make, I'm going to reckon this product as being a rectangle. And this one has side length x, and this one x plus b. Wonderful. So now, the thing about area, one of the things about area is that you can do a lot of things to, to a shape and not change its area. So for example, I'm holding onto this rectangle. I can move it around. Its area is not changing as a result of this. And I can take it and I can rotate it and its area is not changing as a result of this. And if I was to take it and cut it into two pieces, we'd have two pieces now, but the sum of the areas of those pieces would be the same as the area of the original. So, so translating, rotating, and, shear and cutting do not change the area. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take this shape. And I'm going to cut it right here so that this is x, and this is x, and this is b. <clears throat> now notice that now we have two rectangles in play. And in particular, this is a, this is a nice rectangle. What kind of rectangle is this one? It, it's a square, right? It's a square because it's x and then x. This one is, is not generally going to be a square because its side lengths are x and b. OK. So then now, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to bisect it. I've got it right down the middle. So this is x, and this is x. And if I cut this piece right down the middle, then what's, what are these lengths? B over 2, right? So this one is B over 2, and this one is also B over 2. OK. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this one red, just the one on the right, because I'm going to move it to a new position, and I want you to be able to clearly see where it went. Now, moving it doesn't change the area. <clears throat> so 
So can you see where it went? Yeah, I haven't changed the area of, of the object. I've changed, it, I've changed its shape. OK, so this is x. This is x. This is b over 2. This is b over 2. So what is this length right here? x plus b over 2. Good. And what's this length right here? x plus b over 2. So I'd like for you to observe that this is not a rectangle, but it, it almost is, isn't it? It's like there's a little piece missing. If, if we were to just fill that in, it'd be a rectangle. And it'd be better than a rectangle. What would it be? It'd be a square. So what would you say about this? Maybe this square is incomplete, would you say? <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to fix it. <laughs> maybe, maybe it doesn't identify as a square. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to make it a square. I'm going to add this little square. But but you can't just add that. You can't just add that because this is an equation. So if we're going to do that, then what else must we do? We must also subtract that much. Mm -hmm. So now, I added this much and subtracted that much. Now I have a question for you. This little bit that's missing here, what th this little bit is a square. What are its dimensions? <laughs> what, are its di what are its dimensions? <laughs> Yeah, b over 2 and b over 2. So what is the area of this little green square? b over 2 all squared. So, so we, we added a little green b over 2 squared and subtracted a little green b over 2 squared. And the result was the difference of squares. So can everyone see it now? Good. This is the reason why it's called complete the square. I mean, it's not just because it sounded neat or foreboding. Complete the square. Okay. <clears throat> and let to, for completeness now, what is what is the side length of this square? Right. So this is. Very good. Any questions about this geometric construction? OK. So um, now speaking of the general quadratics, the most general quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. And it is necessary in order for it to, what is necessary in order for this to actually be a quadratic equation? Yeah, a is not 0. Because if a was 0, then it wouldn't be quadratic. Okay, so this is the most general one. The, we, on the first page, we did the specific case. What were A, B, and C on this page? One, four, and one on this page. And we solved this by completing the square, right? By adding, by adding half of that and blah, 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 blah. So we could do that here. We could do that here. I could divide by a. Why can I, why can I divide this equation by a? Because it's not 0. Okay? If, a was, if we didn't have that guarantee, it would not be legitimate to divide by a. 
but we do have that guarantee, so we can. Once we divide by A, the resulting quadratic on the left-hand side will be monic. And then we could complete the square just like we did before. And we could do a whole <laughs> bunch of algebraic mishmash and, and gymnastics, and we could isolate X on the left-hand side, and we could have only A's, B's, and C's on the right-hand side. So we could get to this analogous position to where we had X on the left-hand side and something involving square roots and ABCs on the right-hand side. Okay. So if we were to do that, complete the square, You, you would start out by dividing by A. You'd have x squared plus b over a, x plus c over a is 0. And you do a bunch of stuff that generally makes students sad. If you were to do that, and I'll skip it for now unless we have a lot of time at the end. If you were to do that, you would arrive at the following formula. X is negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC and then all of this divided by 2A. So what's the name of this? Quadratic the quadratic formula. So that's the name of this proposition. So this right here is called the quadratic formula. And notably, notably, this thing right here, quadratic equation, is this. So this is a quadratic equation. This is the quadratic formula. Many students at this, at this juncture are still kind of confused about the distinction between a formula and an equation. Uh, the reason, par part of the reason is just the language is somewhat similar. Quadratic equation, quadratic formula. The other reason is that when all of these things were being set down a long time ago, the people setting them, setting them down did not understand the philosophical distinction between test for equality and uh, assignment. So, so this this is, this is an object of type equation. This is an object of type formula. So I'm just telling you that so that you, so that you don't, so that you can use the correct terminology. So this is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic formula. But I'm not going to count off or anything like that. Okay. Now, this is, this is the quadratic formula, and it is something that you're expected to memorize it will not be provided for you and you will be required to use it. <clears throat> and you may look at that and say, okay, that's the most complicated formula I've ever had to memorize to this point in my life. Okay, maybe that's true. However, here's something interesting. I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. And at their respective ages three, when each of them was three, they were both able and are still able to recite to me the quadratic formula. Okay, so, so I, I make no claim as to them having any idea what it means. I'm sure that they don't, even now. But they can tell me what it is. And the reason why they can tell me what it is is because <coughs> we sing it to the tune of Frere Jaca. So here it goes. <coughs> Negative B plus or minus the square root, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, all over 2a. Yeah. Okay. So now it can be sung to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel also, but I won't do it. And it can be sung to various other tunes. Okay. Yeah. 
all over to A. Okay, so, so now you may think that's silly. And, and it may be unexpected that your university instructor was singing a formula. Okay, <laughs> fine. Uh, however, in two weeks' time, you will be in a proctored situation where you are going to be required to use this formula on a quiz. And you may be sitting there trying to remember what that formula is. And just off in the distance, perhaps, one of your colleagues will be sitting there and you'll just faintly hear, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then it'll all come flooding back. Okay? And if that's the case, then I've achieved, yeah, then I've achieved, <laughs> I've achieved my goal. Okay? Good. So any question about the formula? Okay, so for example, <clears throat> please solve 7x squared minus 5x plus 10 is equal to 0. Yes? Are solve and factor when using the quadratic formula No, they're not the same. To factor something is to is to break it into a product of things. Just remind me after we do this, we'll do a, we'll do a factor, and I'll come to the distinction. So for this one, to solve it, uh, we would like to factor it, and to factor it, can you think of two numbers whose product is seventy, and whose sum is negative five? Probably not. You probably can't off the top of your head. But, but there are. No, wait, let, are there? No, there's, there's not. <laughs> so let, 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 I need to change this. We're going to do one just like this. I hate it when the instructor changes the question. I'm so sorry. So now, now can you think of two numbers whose product is negative 70 and whose sum is negative 5? Still no, probably. Okay. <clears throat> but we're going to use the quadratic formula. So specifically to, to invoke the quadratic formula, please tell me what, um, what are A, B, and C in this specific exercise? A is 7. Mm -hmm. Yes. C is negative Thank you. Okay, is there any question why A, B, and C are these values? Okay. So to use the quadratic formula, well, that would be negative negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 7 times negative 10. And then all of this over to a right? Okay. <coughs> so any question about these these numbers being substituted in in this way because if you can get if you can get to this position then more or less you can make it to the end because it's just arithmetic from here okay so carrying this out negative negative five well that's five and then plus or minus okay so this would be 25 and then mm -hmm. minus a negative thing because that's a negative so this is really addition and then that's 7 times 10 which is 70 times 4 is 280 uh, and then plus 25 is 305 so 305 under the radical and then 14 in the denominator any question about getting here okay I'm not interested at, uh, right here in seeing if I can t get things out of the radical that's a different matter but what I want you to understand is that this, this signifies two different solutions. So what are the solutions? 5 plus, plus 3 of 5 of 14. Yes? And 5 minus 3 Very good. Uh, thank you.
Okay, good. So now, uh, I'd like to make a, I'd like to note something. And that is, a, as an aside, let's solve a really easy one now. So I can compare and contrast. So uh, how about x squared uh, minus 10x and then plus 16 equal to 0. So this one's really easy in comparison. So because we were given a monic quadratic and we're asked to solve, what's the first thing we should check? Right, can you do the factor thingy? So can you think of two numbers whose product is 16 and whose sum is negative 10? Very good. So what are the solutions? Okay, so now, what I want you to do, uh, not now, but in your own time, what I'd like for you to do is just go ahead and use the quadratic formula for this and verify that, that even through the quadratic formula, you still get 2 and 8. So look at the quadratic formula. We've got this square root going on. So imagine what that must imply about this particular example. Because are there square roots in these? No, there aren't any. So that must, must have meant what? Yeah, that somehow the thing that was under the square root in the formula had to be a square. Right? So maybe something like 16 was under the, under the radical, because the squ then the square root of 16 would be 4. Or maybe it was something like 25 was under the radical, so that its square root would be 5. So did that happen here? Is 305 a square, uh, an integer square? No, it's not. So notably, what I'd like you to observe is that these solutions, these solutions are in the quotients. Gesundheit. So what is that, what do I mean by this? It means that they're, that they're a rational number, right? They're rational. And so how about these two? Are these rational numbers? Could you, could you write this as the ratio of two integers? No, you could not. So these solutions, these two are in the reals, but not the rationals. Okay, interesting. So any question about, about the distinction here? So apparently some of the times the roots, the zeros, th these solutions can be rational and sometimes not rational. Is there any other possibility? Do the roots always need to be rational or not rational like this? Rational or real but not rational? Is there any other possibility? Yeah, okay, so then let's see. What about this case? Um, uh, how about x squared uh, minus 2x and then plus 10? <coughs> is, uh, will that work? Yeah, okay, good. Plus 10 is zero. So I want you to solve it. So can you think of two numbers whose product is 10 and whose sum is negative 2? Probably not, off the top of your head anyway. Okay, so if you can't think of two numbers whose product is 10 and whose sum is negative 2, then what? Quadratic. quadratic formula. 
Okay, specifically, what are A, B, and C in this exercise? Good. So that would be uh, 2, because that's negative negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10. And then all of this over 2 times 1. OK. So then carrying that out a little bit, so that'd be 2 and then plus or minus. So what would this be? That'd be 4 and then minus 40. OK. So that would be uh, the square root of negative 36 over 2. And uh oh, wait a minute, square root of negative, negative 36? Ah, right, so, so we can proceed through not the reals now, but the complex numbers. So, so how, do we, how do we deal with that? Six. Right, so then this would be 2 plus or minus the square root of 36, positive 36, and this negative jumps out as the unit imaginary number i. And then, okay, now we can proceed. So what's the square root of um, 36? Six. six. So that'd be 2 plus or minus 6i over 2. 6i, that's like 3 quarters of a spider. Wow. What? 6i is spider has 8 eyes. I like that. 6i is 3 quarters of a spider. There we go. There you go. There we go. You know what, you know what imaginary yeah. numbers are used for? Yeah, <laughs> you know what? So, they're used for counting unicorns. <laughs> okay, well, one bad joke deserves another, right? Okay, so then. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what are the? <laughs> so there's two solutions. What do these? What do these correspond to? Good, so 2 plus 6i over 2, or, uh, oh, now I, got, now I got distracted. Okay, 2 minus 6i, and then because usually if, if, I, if I select a question like this where the arithmetic works out so nice, I'll say and simplify, blah, blah. So then how do you simplify this? Good. This 2 divides into that one and also that one, so this would be 1 plus 3i. Yes, and the other one, 1 minus 3i. So now back to the top, back to the top, I could say, well, can you think of two numbers whose product is 10 and whose sum is negative 2? And the answer is the negation of these. Right, so then two numbers whose product is 10 and whose sum is negative 2, well, that'd be negative 1 minus 3i and negative 1 plus 3i. The product of those is 10, and the sum of those is negative 2. Nice. Okay, any question about this? Yes? So the thing that you just said, the negation, would be like the factors, right? So when right. You get this, and then you turn them into factors. Right. So now, so now I'm going to answer your question in full. So, here's an example. So x squared, let's make it more interesting. Let's make it 2x squared plus 3x and then minus 10 is 0. And, no, not, not is 0. I'm just going to say this, just this. And my, my request to you is to factor this. I want you to factor this. Okay. So now that's different than solve, right? So then on this question, this question was find the solutions. We found them. These are the solutions to the equation. Here, 
Here, I gave you an equation, but I didn't write solve, so I should write solve to be clear. But if I hadn't written solve, and I had written factor, then this would be, the, then this would be what I was requesting. Write this, left-hand side, as the product of these things. So what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to write this as the product of things. So the way this works is you work by first solving. So first solve 2x squared plus 3x minus 10 equal to 0. So can you think of two numbers whose product is negative 20 and whose sum is 3? Probably not. Uh, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula, but I'm going to do it very quick because that's not the purpose of this exercise. So the quadratic formula would be negative 3 plus or minus square root of 4 minus, no, 9 minus uh, 4 times 2 times negative 10. All of this divided by 2 times 2. So x is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, so that would be 9, and then plus 80. So that would be square root of 89 over 4. So the two solutions are negative 3 plus square root 89 over 4, and x is negative 3 minus the square root of 89 over 4. So is this the answer to the question? It is not the answer to the question. However, any time that you have a solution, any time that you have a solution, x minus that solution is always a factor. It's always a factor. So you have two solutions, and therefore you have how many factors? Two factors. So the factorization we're almost done. 30 seconds. The factorization is, one of the factors is x minus <coughs> negative 3 plus square root 89 over 4. And the other factor is x minus negative 3 minus the square root of 89 over 4. And is this factorization correct? Have we done it right? Yes. No. <laughs> so why, why is this not right? It's wrong. There's one thing. But OK, I agree that it's not right because it's wrong. OK, but in what manner is it wrong? No. It's always, it's always going to be x minus that one. That's a factor. And x minus that one is another factor. So this one gets routed directly into here, and this one routed directly into the other position. It's always x minus 1 and x minus the other. But nevertheless, this is not right. I'm sorry? Right. If you were to multiply this out, if you were to FOIL this, what, you'd get 1x squared. But how many x squares do we need? Also, notice that the horizontal space on either side of the equal is not the same. You should, should have seen it coming. Have a nice Wednesday.